motorsport is being reinvented. ABB Formula E brings electric street racing to some of the most dynamic cities around the world. Drivers battle it out on city streets in some of the closest and most fiercely fought racing there's ever been. It's not just for the thrill of the fans, but to develop and push the technology of everyday electric cars in order to promote cleaner air in our cities. The new season is about to begin. And with German giants Porsche and Mercedes-Benz joining the most competitive lineup in motorsport, there will be more manufacturers in Formula E than any other racing series. These manufacturers are competing to build the most advanced electric powertrains that the world has ever seen. And with a grid already full of summer motorsports brightest stars, the rookies will have their work cut out. But with talents like Nick De Vries and Brendan Hartley stepping into the fray, could we see the old guard challenged by the new kids on the block? The new season promises to be even faster, tighter, and more dramatic. This is Street Racers, your inside guide to the incredible world of ABB Formula E. This week's show is all about the upcoming new season as we head to Valencia for the pre-season test to see how Porsche's journey towards their first Formula E race is getting on. And what about their fierce rivals, Mercedes-Benz? We get a first glimpse of the new Silver Arrows in action and hear from Nick DeVries, one of motorsport's hottest young drivers. Geox Dragon and Neo 333 have had a busy summer. After finishing at the bottom of the pile last season, both teams need to up their game in 2020. We bring you their latest news. Plus, we head to Yokohama, Japan, to see the launch of the brand new Nissan Edams car and get the lowdown on the new season from their drivers. First up, though, we're off to sunny Monaco. For Panasonic Jaguar Racing, last season marked a big improvement in form. Right up to the final showdown in New York, their star Kiwi driver Mitch Evans was still in the fight for the title, eventually finishing fifth overall. Ahead of the new season, we caught up with him in his home in Monaco as he prepares to get back in the electric fast lane. Physical fitness is important in motorsport, mainly because of the, let's say, the G-forces that we experience in the car. I think in general, we all like to keep nice and healthy and strong and, and to be in, be in good shape, looking like you're in good shape. It shows that you're professional and, and you take your job seriously as well. Session one, we can go down to the beach, do a little strength circuit with our body. Then we're going to get the bikes, head out for three hours. Happy with that? Only? Only three hours? So. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the warm-up, actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. And then core and mobility on the pit. Yeah, sound good? That's good. So my summer break, I've been, I stayed in the States for a few weeks. Since then I've been preparing with the team, testing. So it was a bit of a balance between cool downtime and then started getting back into the swing of things and also a bit of itchy feet, wanting to get back into, into racing. So make sure I'm in good shape for the start of the season. Mitch Evans through the final corner to win the Romy Prix for Jaguar. So last season was obviously it was great for a number of reasons. We, we, we got our first win and, and a few podiums off the back of that. We were challenging for the, for the title, but there was definitely a period of the championship where we made life hard for ourselves. Degrassi's oh. in the wall, Evans is in the wall. So yeah, probably mixed feelings, but also it was definitely positive. You know, we, we are going in the right direction as a team. We've built a lot more confidence and we can build it on that into next year and hopefully raise the, raise the bar. Overall, my motivation is, is, is extremely high. I guess not quite getting what you wanted just makes you obviously naturally work harder and, and, and want it more. So feeling good. I think everyone's very eager to get started. It's gonna be tougher than last year, so we're gonna have to raise our game. Having got his mind and body into shape in Monte Carlo, next up for Mitch and the Jaguar team was to put the machines to the test in Spain. Every year, the Ricardo Tormo circuit just outside of Valencia plays host to all of the Formula E teams as they show their cards for the very first time over three days of testing. It's the first chance for everyone to see what a summer of development work has done. 
It's also the first opportunity for Mitch's new teammate, James Collado, to get up to speed in his new machine. Fresh from winning the GT category at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, he was looking forward to the challenge ahead. Panasonic Jaguar Racing have actually you know, given me this amazing opportunity to join such a great team. And uh, yeah, I think we, we've got a good future ahead of us. It's been really beneficial to get these three days for me and uh, also for the team. We're really working through an intense program to try and develop the car and see where we are in terms of pace. Uh, it looks pretty good so far. Um, on my side, just learning, learning, learning every session, trying to understand the car as well as I can. So everything's coming together. Still, still a long way to go on, on my side, but um, yeah, looking forward to, to how it's going to go in, in Saudi and see where we stand there. Yeah, I've known James actually since I moved to Europe. I raced against him in 2011 and 2013. He was extremely fast back then and hopefully it's going to be a really healthy rivalry but also a relationship which will ultimately and ideally move the team forward. Despite looking quick on track, James was still getting to grips with his brand new car and pushed it a little too hard. Yeah, well, made a bit of a silly mistake and uh, unfortunately hit, hit the wall, but um, you know, it's, uh, it's all part of learning the process. The guys did a good job, they repaired the car. I managed to do four or five laps at the end just to get a bit of a reference for myself. All in all, it's nice to be back and um, yeah, enjoying every moment. Here on Street Racers, we've been keeping a close eye on one of ABB Formula E's new entries making its debut this season, the German Giants of Porsche. After two years driving in Formula E for DS to Cheetah, culminating in winning last season's team's title, Andre Lotterer decided to join Porsche, a team he has history with, having driven for them in their Le Mans prototype cars. I was in the Porsche family since 2017, so it made sense for me to, uh, to accept the, the offer and join this new challenge. So a lot of work, obviously, and the championship uh, is a great place to be right now, and uh, with a brand like Porsche, uh, something I, I wanted to be part of. This whole recipe of Formula E with energy management, fighting the others with very equal level of performance, playing with the walls, being at the limit uh, with that is one of the biggest, or if not the biggest challenge I've ever had in motorsport. Formula E experience is very important in this championship. It's not the kind of championship where you, you arrive with uh, a huge amount of technology. We pretty much all have the same cars, the same power. Yeah, let's see how, how quickly we get to the top. Andre Lotterer's teammate is Swiss driver Neil Jarni, who has plenty of experience with Porsche, winning both the 24 Hours of Le Mans and the World Endurance Championship with the team in 2016. The preparation work in Valencia was important for us because we made a lot of learnings seeing the other cars also on track. It's the first time we met competition. I would say the key learnings the last month have clearly been that in Formula E it's all about details. You have to get everything together, the package has to work together. And if something is a bit out, you are two tenths slower because of that, that means already five, six positions down the grid. So we keep working on the details. Being new, I think it is very important that the team spirit is good uh, because there will be tough times and there will be good times. The objective is to be uh, competitive. I uh, want to be in the mix, I uh, want to be in the fight for points and then clearly at some stage uh, the podium is the aim. Going to the first race in Riyadh after this long testing phase, uh, it finally counts. The drivers feel the pressure to succeed, but Andre Lotterer in particular will be looking to make a statement. His close friend and former teammate at DS to Cheetah, Jean-Eric Verne, will be one of Andre's main targets after leaving the championship winning team for the new boys at Porsche. Of course we're here to win, I'm here to win, but uh, we are aware that in the beginning it might take a, a few races, uh, hopefully just a few. But um, I don't think you can focus on one person to beat only. Everyone is trying to, to do their best to win. It's one thing to be at the top, it's another thing to stay at the top. Anyway, in my mind I want to go to Riyadh and be on the podium. Uh, that's, that's a fact and, um, and let's see who's going to be up for the fight. We can't wait to see that fight take to the streets. Will close friends turn into rivals? Can Niljani make a big first impression? It's not long until we find out.
Envision Virgin Racing have been in Formula E since the very start. They have never finished a championship outside the top five, but a first title is still to be won. Drivers Sam Bird and Robin Frines are on board for another year, and preparations for the upcoming title fight are well underway. Will this be their season? We're at Audi Sports Test Track in Neuburg in Germany, where as an Audi customer, the Envision Virgin Racing team were getting up to speed. We're far more prepared for this season than we were for last year. However, every team's made improvements. Every team's going to be thinking that they've made a big stride forward. So I really don't know what to expect going into the season. After a roller coaster championship with reliability issues, devastating for Sandberg's errors, they nudge, they nudge, and plain bad luck blunting the impact of six strong podium finishes, they finished third place in the team's championship. It was all new to everyone because it was a Generation 2 car for the first time, so no one really knew where, where they were. Throughout the season, I think we, we made some big steps and we did a really good job. And maybe with a bit more luck, we were fighting for the title till the end. Yeah, I think there's, there's more to, to lose than to gain. More teams, more good teams. So Porsche and Mercedes obviously coming in into it. Um, it'll be exciting, you know, 24 cars on the grid. Sometimes that's going to feel really, really crowded out there, but uh, hopefully, if you're running at the front, it doesn't feel too crowded. I need to win races this year. I hope it's more than one. I hope it's two, three, four. I want to have my name on that trophy at the end of the season that has sort of evaded me so far. Family in general has been very competitive. Uh, a lot of drivers and teams can, can win races. It's really a game to, to stay out of trouble and to keep on scoring points even on, on bad days. It will be more interesting, it will be more demanding on, on, on the team itself. It's more like if you see a gap, you should go for it. I'd say this is the most stable the team has ever been. Everything is pointing in the right direction for us to have the best chance of having a good season this year. In this championship, there's no bad outfit out there. That's why it's so difficult, that's why this championship is so hard, so competitive and so rewarding when you get it right. There is no weakness in this championship. You've got to be on the top of your game. We know for a fact that when they are on top of their game, Envision Virgin Racing are a force to be reckoned with and have the speed to fight for the title. There isn't just one big German team joining the ABB Formula E family this season, but two as Mercedes-Benz takes its place as a full factory team after participating last season under the guise of HWA Race Lab. Having dominated Formula One for five years, Mercedes' move into Formula E is a huge statement in the world of motorsport and another sign of the strength of the all-electric series. Former F1 driver Stoffel Van Dorn gets a second season at the wheel of a Formula E car after competing for HWA last time out. And he is joined by one of the hottest properties on the driver market newly crowned Formula 2 champion, Nick DeVries. I think that the driver level in this championship is, is extremely high. Obviously, people coming from, from everywhere, champions across uh, very big championships. It's um, an honor to be part of this and, and, and fighting against all those uh, big names. It, it hasn't been easy so far. Uh, it's, it's very different. It's honestly a complete different approach, concept. Uh, than everything I've driven so far. Everything is new and everything is exciting uh, yeah, to discover. You know, we race in city centres and you're obviously racing between walls on very unique tracks, um, which are very bumpy and tricky. And then in the race you have obviously the, the energy management. So um, there's a lot for me and the team to learn uh, at this stage. But um, yeah, I hope we, we get up to speed uh, quickly. It's really for us as a team, uh, Mercedes-Benz EQ Formula E, it's the uh, first uh, official appearance of the team, but really also it's, it's a big preparation towards the first, uh, the first race in Saudi Arabia. I feel like all the ingredients, all the resources, the people are there to be successful. It's not an easy championship to come into. There's a lot of people with a lot of experience, so uh, you know, we got to work with, with what we have, try to do the best, and, and yeah, I really hope for, uh, 
for the future we'll, uh, we'll be able to fight for championships. Racing on the streets is, is, makes it very complicated for everyone. It makes the championship extremely competitive. And if you're a little bit off, you quickly find yourself at the back. So it's all about perfection. It's easy to get it, to, to get it wrong. Uh, it's very hard to get it right consistently. And there's no margin for error. With Porsche and Mercedes both joining the series, it will be the first time that along with Audi and BMW, the four big German manufacturers will have gone head-to-head -head in an open-wheel championship. Can Mercedes beat their German rivals in their first season despite the competition being so fierce? Obviously, we're here uh, to, to, to deliver and to do our job, and that means to beat everyone, and, and not just Porsche, BMW or Audi. Uh, so, so I think that's what we are pushing for. We are working every day to improve our performance, and, and that's what we are focused on. But, you know, they are competitors, and um, they are no different than any other competitor. So um, we'll just focus on our job and do the best possible job we can. That's some fighting talk from the new boys. Mercedes are definitely going to be one to watch this year. ABB Formula E is one of the most competitive championships in motorsport. And with a matter of seconds separating first from last, there's always a huge fight for every point. The two teams that finished at the foot of last year's table have had to make big changes ahead of the upcoming season. Geox Dragon Racing have competed in every season of Formula E. And despite being a private racing team with no major manufacturer backing them, they still opt to build their own powertrain. For the new season, they're looking to capitalize on driver potential with the signing of two high profile rookies, Swiss hotshot Nico Muller and double world endurance champion and former F1 driver, Brendan Hartley. We caught up with the guys at the Valencia preseason test to see how they were settling in. Formula E is, I think, the most exciting racing at the moment uh, you get to see around the globe and uh, very, very proud to be a part of it. Super excited to join Dragon as well. I think, uh, you know, a, a very good bunch of guys, very motivated, every single one in the team and uh, looking forward to get started. I started testing with Geoc Dragon Racing a couple months ago, spent about six or seven days in the car, um, which has been great. You know, the development curve's been pretty steep. I've been getting on well with the team, feeling right at home. Testing the last couple of days with all the cars on track, seeing all the you know all the team teams there, all the all the drivers. It, yeah, it's starting to feel a bit more real. Nico's coming to the team, and I think we're doing a good job at the moment working together to get the most out of it. If, if you're you're entering a series, not thinking that you can can win races, then then maybe you shouldn't be in that job. But I can't think of another championship in the world that that has a such has such depth in, in the in the driver lineups, but also the teams. We're all here to try and, you know, fight for podiums and wins. On the other hand, they're one of the smaller teams. We're trying to challenge the big boys, you know. We can do well, we can surprise some people. The, the goal definitely has to be to set as many highlights as possible. I think Formula E is one of the, the most unpredictable championships as well. Who knows, maybe we, we do even have the package to fight for a win here or there. And there's, you know, no limits at all. You can always improve. Another team with underdog status in Formula E is NEO. Having undergone an extensive restructuring behind the scenes over the summer, the new look NEO 333 racing team also took to the track for the first time at the Valencia test. As well as the extensive internal upheaval resulting in new ownership during the summer, a major technical change has been implemented. After a disappointing first season using their own powertrain in the Gen 2 car, Neo 333 Racing opted to purchase the technology that Geox Dragon used in the 2018-19 season for their upcoming campaign. With huge technical challenges yet to overcome, Neo are looking to the experience of their long-term driver, Oliver Turvey, partnered by Ma Qinghua, the first Chinese driver to ever win an FIA World Championship race. Whether pure talent and the gamble of a new powertrain works out remains to be seen, but there's no doubt that NEO 333 add yet another interesting angle to the series. Most of the teams at the Valencia test were showing off their new liveries. Nissan, however, weren't quite ready to show off their new look. 
Despite an impressive first season in Formula E, with a fourth place finish in the team's championship and a second place finish in the driver's championship, Nissan were one of the last teams to cross the line with their livery launch. We headed to Nissan headquarters in Yokohama, Japan, to check out their brand new car design and to see how their drivers, Oliver Rowland and Sebastian Buemi, are feeling about the upcoming season. As you can see, we've got a new livery. Um, I think personally it's very nice. Uh, it's slightly different to last season. And I'm super excited to get inside and, and see how fast it goes as well. I'm really excited to, to get the opportunity now to see it from very close. And uh, I think it looks great, quite different to last year, but I think we will recognize our car much better and I'm really proud and happy. So looking forward to Riyadh for race one. So yeah, season five was, was slightly up and down for me. To jump in for the first race after not driven the car was, uh, was a jump in at the deep end. You know, I, I quietly surprised myself. My results mid-season were extremely good. I got three pole positions. And yeah, it was nice to be able to go sort of head to head with Seb. Yeah, I learned a lot from him, but then in the end, sort of be able to push him to new levels as well. And, and we saw a little bit towards the end, we were constantly fighting. So I think that's really important in Formula E, and hopefully we can continue that. An honest uh, assessment of season five, I think it was positive, but in some ways it was frustrating. I think we had the opportunity to really fight for the championship. In the end, we finished second, which is, which is great. Yeah, at the end of the season, I was feeling really confident just because I knew every time I hit the track, if I was driving a good lap, I could be within the top three. So that, that makes you really confident because you know that if you don't do mistakes, you're going to be up there fighting for the podium. So yeah, the, the four last races were amazing. And Sebastian Buemi with his first win of the season on the streets of New York City. I would describe my style as quite aggressive. Well, it is out of, it's out of his mind, really. I think it's important to almost lay down a marker sometimes that you're not there to be pushed around or anything like that. And Massa oh. goes in deep and Oliver Rowland says, I'll have some of that, and he and pushes him in the wall. wall. <laughs> Rowland just pushed him in the wall. I was pretty aggressive, sometimes too aggressive, and, and I think that's where in season six I need to find a good balance. I think I have goals in terms of where I want my own performance to be. I want to be more consistent, and it seemed last year in practice, I topped 10 practices or something, so I, I was always fast that I didn't always perform as I should and when it mattered. So I, I think for me that has to come first. And then of course I think if that comes there's no reason why I can't fight for the championship. I think season six is definitely going to be the toughest season in Formula E history. Um, I clearly think that we will be up there in time of pace. We have a good car. It's quite clear that uh, we have now 12 teams, 24 cars. In season five we are 22 cars, in season four we are 20 cars. So. It's getting bigger and it's getting more competitive with big teams like Porsche and Mercedes joining. Um, you know, if we manage to, to beat them, uh, it would be great because uh, it would just show how good our team is. We are working really hard. I think Valencia looked good, but it's just testing and again, we, we have to wait for Riyadh. We can't wait to see that car hit the streets of Riyadh on November 22nd. And based on their success last year, it'll be interesting to see how Nissan fare this time out. Before we end this week's show, let's check out the best of this week's social media. Lucas Degrassi's Throwback Thursday was from the very first demo run of the initial Formula E car concept, way back in 2013. Crazy to see how far we've come. Nico Muller posted this clip his attempt to copy Lucas's moves, this time to celebrate coming to the end of testing his brand new Gen 2 Formula E car. And finally, Pascal Verline showed he's prepared to get stuck in as he helped his mechanics out with maneuvers in the pit lane in Valencia. Good to see him getting his hands dirty. That's it for this week's show and for this series of Street Racers. It's been an amazing year of all-electric action. But don't worry. You don't have to wait long as we are back next week with a brand new series as we power towards the 2019-2020 season of ABB Formula E. Catch you soon, street racers. <laughs>